Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's yours truly, Mike Marino, live from my mother's basement. Now, listen, we did a fantastic show last night. I usually don't do two shows night after night like this. But last night, we had a great show down here in the basement. I want to thank the thousands and thousands of people who wrote into the show to watch the incredible band made up of three 14-year-old kids called Clean Sweet the local garage band right here in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. They were absolutely fantastic. And when the show was over, I got on the drums. I got to sit in with the band. And I'm actually playing the drums back in three 14-year-old kids. Yo, they were doing original, yeah. original music. Yeah. They wrote their own song. But um, I'm in New Jersey, obviously, right now. And I had the opportunity to interview one of the legends of stand-up comedy. This is the guy that everybody wanted to be like. This is the guy we strive to be like still to this day. This is the guy who you can't get on a talk show. This is the guy who's constantly working. He's working in, from Queens and he's working out on the Jersey Shore tonight at a great comedy club. I want to talk about that too. But when I was younger and I was cutting my teeth in Los Angeles doing stand-up comedy, there was a guy on the East Coast that everybody talked about. You got to be like him. You got to get to his level. You got to be as funny as he is. See if you can't get to his level. And then after hearing his name for so many years, I miraculously get to perform in the Montreal Comedy Festival in Montreal, Canada, in a show they called The Wise Guys. And I'm sitting in the green room. A guy named Frank Spadone, who was also in the show, brought in trays of lasagna, and he said, Joey Cole is coming. And everybody got nervous. And I'm saying, that's the guy. That's the guy from Long Island. I want to be like, and he comes in the room and you're thinking, uh oh, this guy's going to be like, I don't know, a big movie star. He's going to have an attitude. I got all nervous and shit like this. He's the nicest guy. Says to me, hey, I couldn't wait to meet you. I heard you were on the show. And since that day, we've always been friends. I still strive to be like him. But today is my show, live from my mother's basement. And I made a phone call. And the luck would have it, he's on his way down to Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club, which is in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, tonight at 9.30, again tomorrow night at 9.30. But I got him here right now, and he's going to have some food with me. Ladies and gentlemen, live from my mother's basement, the legend himself, Mr. Joey Cola, right there. Nice to see you, man. I love you. Check that out, eh? You got you got to tear up. You got a little tear up in the basement. You can't cry down here, Joe. This well, basement was made, was made from mommy, and everybody was a tough guy. And you give me a nice floor of this basement here. It's all the old Italian. Everything's here. There's wine. There's, it smells like food down here. Yeah, you're right. It smells like tomato sauce and fried dough <laughs> and pasta and cheeses. It's down there at all, right here. And I got to tell you. If you I mean, you just gave me the greatest intro I've ever heard in my life, but it's an honor to be here with you. Thank you, you are a true celebrity on the East Thank Coast, you. And the West Coast. You act, you direct, you do your own comedy shows, you sell out places all over the all over the globe because you you do the cruise ships, you sell out those. So it's it, the feeling is mutual, my friend, is what I'm trying to tell you. Fantastic. And it's an honor Thank to you. be here with you. We're breaking bread, we're eating together, and we're friends forever, no matter what, my friend. And we're so, and we are really and, breaking bread. And one of the literally, coolest things that he just said is he, yeah. he smells the sauce, he smells the wine, because in the walls. You smell it here, all around, the walls, all around. These brick walls that you yeah. can never break through. Brick and wood and uh, paneling. It's, you can, <laughs> you, when you're here, you feel like there's, uh, there's uh, uh, old Italian spirits in this room with you. I can't explain it. Well, there are some spirits yeah, in this room. That a lot of people are no longer with us, which is really, right, really sad. Right, but there's sleds on the roof, and there's, <laughs> there's, there's surfboards, there's a drum set. There's wine, there's a cash register from 19 And Jesus. And Jesus is here. <laughs> Jesus is on every wall looking at us. And there's all the pots your mother used. And everybody probably ate out of those pots. And it, uh, it really is an honor to be here in your mother's basement with you. I've been watching the show for a long, long time. I told you, eventually, I want to get there. I got, was on my way to South Jersey, and I said, you know what, Mike? I come down there now, and you said, yes. Yeah. So here we are. We got sandwiches, and hopefully we got people watching us. I know that. There's a lot of people watching. They're all writing in really, really fast, and we'll answer some questions while yeah. they're writing in right now. And I'm glad that you said that because, yes, one of the whole purposes of doing this type of show to show people around the world who happen to be watching my show what it's like to be in the basement right. of a real Jersey house where the food is made 
and uh, we all hung out and still hang out. We all grew up in basements. Like when my yeah. relatives in Queens and Brooklyn and Williamsburg and all of that. My grandmother's house was, was two levels, and then there was the basement level. There was the club, club that hung out with, <laughs> then the basement level. And they utilized the base. They utilized every square inch. And like you said before, whether they cooked down there, they stored stuff down there, they hid some stuff down there. You never know. But uh, it's great to be in the basement. You get such a good feel here. So, and to be here with you, I'm having a, a pisser already, man. This is great. Look, look at all the people who are writing into the show right now. <laughs> this over here on Instagram, we got some really cool friends writing in over here on Facebook Live. That's great. And of course, everybody knows that when they listen to the show every Thursday night at 8 o'clock on DDV Radio. Uh -huh. And anytime they want to listen to the show, and you can listen to Joey Cola. We are on www.italianamericanradio.com, right out of New York City. Right over here, you see Maurice writing in. Hi, Maurice. How are you? Say hello to Joey. Hey, Maurice. This is my cousin Caroline from down the block. She's in Florida right now. And Florida. Uh, my I grew up to Rachel Rachel. <laughs> and whenever I meet, I say, where are you guys from? You guys are from Florida. Not originally. When the original from Floridians say, where are you from? Florida. Where are you from? Florida. You're from New York and New Jersey. I can know by somebody else. Well, right now, if you look over to the right, see who's writing into the show right now. Of course, my cousin Caroline, her last name is Juliano, but her, her last name now is Grill. She's out there in Florida. She's coming to visit her family, who mm -hmm. I was telling you about my father is over at her mother's house, right? Then you see Tom. Dr. Tom is my dentist. He's the one who filled my tooth yesterday. yesterday. He's a fantastic dentist, and I tell people all the time, if you need a good dentist, a guy who's not going to cheat you, he's not going to rip you off, he's not going to do what so many dentists do. They upcharge you, they make you buy shit that you don't even need. No. Are you going to go see Dr. Yeah. Tom at the Audubon Family Dentistry in Audubon, New Jersey? It's a bit of a drive, I'm but a, if you need it, you need it. I'm a big fan of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and Hermie wanted to be a dentist. So. <laughs> <laughs> this guy kind of looks like Hermie. He's got blonde hair and blue eyes. Hermie wants to make toys. No, he doesn't want to make toys. He wants, he to, be wants to be a dentist. Be a dentist. Yeah. Right. And of course, here's one of our fellow comedians writing into the show right now. Who's that? We both know Pam the Butts. Hey, Pam, how are you? Hey, Pam, how are you? Not only is Pam very, very funny, yeah. but she's a great sketch comedian and she can sing. Sing, yes. Right? Yeah. So if you want to see Pam the Butts, I happen to know that she's performing in Wayne, New Jersey, next uh -huh. Wednesday night okay. in a fundraiser that Gonzo puts together, which yeah. is for. Um, what Bobby Gonzo. Women? I love. What's that? What, what's the a charity that he always does like once a month oh, he, 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 for he's battered charity. women, actually? Yeah. So if you want to go see Pam the Butts, log on right now, pamthebutts.com, right here on Facebook. And here, of course, is one of my sponsors. That's Jim Mulcahy. Mulcahy. Jim Mulcahy, he's got that big sign right over there with his okay. wife, Barbara. And that's Jim Mulcahy. Folks, if you're looking to buy a house, right. if you're looking to rent a house, maybe right. you have a house you want to sell, Remax of Berkeley Heights, you're going to go to sell with Mulcahy. Dot com. Not only are they really nice people, but right. they know their business. They'll get you something really, really great, or they'll help you sell what you're looking to sell as far as a house. So that's Remax of Berkeley Heights. Yeah. Uh, we relocated the show tonight. We're in the, the uh, dining room because we're going to eat. We're going to talk about where we're going to get the food from. Yeah. But I want to thank my sponsors. Not only can you go to www.sellwithmokehi.com. You can give them a call. Watch, i got to do this. 908 665 Zero six hundred. <laughs> All right, there you go. So that's Jim Mulcahy. That's Tom. That's Chris. Ham the butts. Let's see. Somebody say hello to Joey Cola. This is one of the funniest, funniest, funniest comedians around. We're all going to talk about his if career. They don't know who I am? I, I, I warm up with Rachel, but currently I warm up. I do my warm up now. Uh, I just did Murphy Brown for thirteen weeks. I've been doing stand up for a while. And I got this new movie out, Gender Bender, which I want everybody to go see. Or rent it on Amazon, Google Play, and also uh, iTunes. If you rent it. Well, let's tell us about. Well, first of all, Joey Cola was the man to look up to. Still is. Uh, when you heard about comedy in the stand-up world, you knew Joey Cola and a lot of other great comedians. will say their names when they come on the show. But right now, Joey Cola is the man. 30, 38 years. I've been Thirty-eight doing. years performing live stand-up comedy before the word social media which is what's launching other comedians these days. But Joey was in the grind. He was on the ground floor when it was in comedy clubs. Comedy clubs went on to theaters, and then theaters onto social media. But he's also the warm-up host, which means he gets the crowd ready to watch yeah. a TV show. So tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, so I started off with the original John Stewart show, not the, uh, the political one that he had, another show at WOR that we had in New York. 
I did a year with him in, in 1993, uh, 92, 93, I believe it was. And I was with Rosie O'Donnell for six years. Then I moved on to Martha Stewart for seven years. And now I'm with Rachel Ray for seven years. In between, I did uh, America's Got Talent when, when Howard Stern was there, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, uh, The Marriage Ref that Seinfeld produced with Tom Papa. But I've, I've warmed up a, a lot of shows. And what it is is when you do stand-up, you know, Mike, you welcome people into your house. When I when I warm up a TV show, I warm up the Mike Marino show, let's say, and there's an audience there. I welcome your audience into your house, and I tell them what's going on. Are you guys ready to see Mike today? Yeah. All right, remember, we're making television. We're not watching television. We have some audience signals, things we need from the audience because they're involved. You know, so I let them know what they're in for. I let them know what's, what the, the morning is going to be like or the afternoon. With Rachel Ray, we do three shows a day, which is – uh, more television than anybody's ever done. We do seven segments a show, so 21 segments a day, uh, 63 segments a week, which is more than anybody's doing. And uh, I do that during the day, and then I do my stand-up at night on the weekends, and then it becomes my show, and I can say what I want and do what I want. He's got so a that's what I've been doing. Career. Yeah. This is a guy who's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether he's warming up the show or performing live, and listen to all the celebrities he's actually friends with and he works with them. And what's really cool right now, we're actually getting some letters in from a friend that we have in common out at Riviera, or what was the Riviera. And Charlene Corvino. Oh, hey, Charlene. Charlene, how you doing? We miss you. We miss you. Long time no see. Miss you. And here's Johnny Salano and Ray, Ray Lynn. The Ray Lynn is saying that there's Wait, a comedy roast in New York. Johnny Saliano, that's Kumba Johnny. Where is, is that he? really? Wait a minute. Wait, Johnny, if that's Johnny, yeah, that's Kumba Johnny right there. Johnny Saliano. Goomba. Hi, Joe. Big what fan. What did say? <laughs> is that Johnny? That's Goomba Johnny right there. Goomba Johnny. We're going to have him on the show. Too, Goomba. Nice. Goomba Johnny, how you doing? If you remember Goomba Johnny, everybody. Johnny, an unbelievable you got to come here to his career. basement. This is unbelievable. The whole house is like a museum. It's stuff here from like 2000. I mean, 2016. <laughs> no, I got no. things here from no, he's fucking 1800s. From the 1800s. Don't yeah, get yeah. me nuts. You know what the funny thing is? Mike and his act talked about, hey, get the bat, get the bat. He's got a million bats planted everywhere in his house. Well, one of the greatest things is when you have fans <laughs> and they mail you gifts. Yeah. I don't know how they find out where I live, but I got uh, at least 20 somewhat baseball bats in this house. My fans, because they know I like Nutella, they give me Nutella. They send me Nutella. You, you got a million bats here. Yeah. We should all say we, we should say that we like gold bricks. Let them send them. <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't even think that. You know what? I like money. There you go, money. Mail us some cash. Right now, we're getting some some um, emails from Saudi Arabia. This is uh, Goomba wow. means uh, buddy. She's calling us a Goomba. He's writing in from Italy, and that's Jack, and that's Benjamin. I was just guys. in Italy. We celebrate, my wife and I celebrated 31 years being married. We were over in Tuscany. I know I'm getting fat, but everywhere I went, people go, hey, prego, prego, prego. I'm like, oh, my God, am I that fat? People call me prego. <laughs> so that is Johnny, uh, Goomba Johnny right Goomba there. Goomba Johnny right there. Johnny Saliano. I was just on tour. Uh, he was in Gender Bender too. Oh, he's in Gender he's Bender? In the movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. So another reason why you guys need to go see this movie that Joey Cola is in, Gender Bender, because it also stars Goomba Johnny. Goomba Johnny. It's got a lot of comics. It's got comics. It's got Danny Cohen. It's got uh, Chris Martin. But it's also got Eric Roberts is in it. And Gilbert Gottfried is the funniest scene that Gilbert's ever done. Is a, it's these three guys, they, they lose their job to women, so they go on a bender and they lose their gender. They get a spell put on them. Actually, Gilbert plays my gynecologist. So, um, very, very funny. You don't have to think about anything. It's wait a minute, wait a minute. Gilbert Godfrey plays, plays your... my gynecologist. I got to see this movie. Like, it's the funniest scene you're ever going to see. I like that. I like we, that. We, we laughed all day. <laughs> He's really funny, but it was it was written funny. Um, of course, there's you know, about 100 grand to do it. It's an independent film. But uh, but the the thing is, it's really really funny. It's a throwback to like Animal House or like Hot Tub Time Machine or The Hangover like that. And it's we we take no prisoners. It's not politically correct at all, and it's mindless. It's a mindless thing. So if you want to drink, you want to smoke a little bit, eat whatever you want to do, and it, it, just go watch a funny movie. It's an hour and fifteen minutes. You're gonna laugh hard. Gender Bender, it's available on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. It's like four bucks to rent it. Well, everybody out there, you just heard. Not only can you watch Joey Cola do some stand up live in your neighborhood somewhere someday, you can go watch this movie and you're going to get a double whammy because not only is Joey in the movie, 
but uh, Gilbert Gottfried and of course our friend, my new friend, uh, Goomba Johnny. I was actually yeah. out in Canada right. and we went and did a show, Make America Italian Again, and this time Goomba Johnny was on the show. Now, I'm not right. really friends with Goomba. I don't really know right. of him. Right. We've only done maybe one or two shows together before. Uh, the show went great. He was fantastic. Yeah, when he told me his up. life yeah. story, I'm like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he needs to write a book. He, he knows to make a everybody. Movie. He knows everybody, uh, and and he's got a great career. Goomba Johnny um, is a great actor, a great stand-up comedian, but also he was the top radio personality in New York on uh, on KTU and and, uh, and and a million other stations. But he is one of my good friends, and I love him. And it's great to uh, great to see you listening, Johnny. Yes. Well, listen. This is all fantastic stuff. I thank everybody for writing in so fast, so fun. So happy I'm getting now. hungry, Mike. But we're starving here, and I have a buffet. This buffet happens to be sub sandwiches from Florence Ravioli on Park Avenue, right here in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Now, Joey, you go ahead and take a nice big slab of that turkey sloppy sandwich. We have mayonnaise on the table for people who want to just inject mm. some cholesterol into their heart. We also have oil and vinegar, plain oil and vinegar, and then we have balsamic vinegar. Now, whether you're Italian, not Italian, uh, the way I always had a sub sandwich throughout my life is you soak the bread with oil and vinegar. You drench that shit like a good Jersey sub or a nice deli sub. When you go to a local deli and the guy behind the counter has an attitude like he wants you to just get the fuck out of the deli, that's when you know you're going to have a good sandwich because he doesn't want to be there. That means that sandwich is going to be good. So what we did this afternoon, I went to Florence Ravioli, which is in town. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, I like to put on extra oil and vinegar myself because if you get it in the afternoon, if they put too much on, by the time you eat the sandwich, it's a little mushy. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it down mushy. here now. It's a little, a little mushy. A little mushy. It's a mushy. And now uh, this is a nice Italian bread. It's very thick. I like my bread a little thinner. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, my mother used to call it taking out the moldine. She would take out the moldine. You heard that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You open the, the bread middle. like this, and you take out the middle of the bread. You roll it up in a bowl, and you throw it over your shoulder for good luck. I don't know what that meant. It meant, it meant you could have a fucking mess. But she would take out the moldine like this. That's right. And then you tasted mostly the cold cuts or what was inside the bread. Um... I went to Florence Ravioli. Now, Florence Ravioli in Scotts Plains, New Jersey, has been around right. here for like a hundred somewhat years. It's not even a joke. And you go in there, there's um, sawdust all over the floor. There's black and white photographs from back in the 1800s. It's very small, a little dark, a little dingy. That lets you know the food in here is going to be great. great. And not only the food, uh, the things that you could take home. It's a catering company. You can get your party catered, right? Yep. We're not talking hamburgers and hot dogs. We're talking sausage and peppers. We're talking meatball sandwiches. We're talking chicken parmesan. We're talking the drinks. They have their own cocktail. Look at soda. Um, check that out, everybody. Florence Ravioli, black cherry. Florence Ravioli, black cherry. He's mm -hmm. drinking the orange. I actually wanted the orange, but I knew he would want the orange more than the black cherry. So I sacrificed my fucking taste buds so my guest could eat. Look, he can't even breathe. That sandwich is so good. So if anybody's in the area, or even if you're not, go visit. Because it's like going to watch The Sopranos make an episode. The people in there are new now. And my friends have taken it over from high school. And they uh, decided to go ahead and buy the place. And that is... Uh, Lauren DeFilippo Turchin and her son, fantastic people. We are enjoying this right now. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to go to Florence Ravioli. You, I got it. They got menus that you could take home. Look, Joey can't even breathe. That's how great this breathe. sandwich is. I want to go to get raviolis. Yeah. I need some sausage and raviolis. I'm gonna make some meatballs. Okay. See, you can you can get all of this pre-made. The raviolis are made, the, or you could take them home frozen, boil them yourself, have yeah. them make it for you, have your party catered. You remember things this like really suprasad, pepperoni, Super right? You can't have, you can't even order in this place like a normal person. You got to yell, you got to scream, give me the bucket of yeah, mm. <laughs> right? Let me just see who else is right over good. here. Hi, Tammy. How are you? It's good to see you. Goodbye, Johnny. I hope you're having fun. Let's see all the people. 
Look, it is Jeff, Jeff uh, Fat Rat, Fat Bastard Parami. Jeff Parami. Hey, Jeff, how you doing, man? We're in the basement. There's Lauren DeFilippo Turchin right now. We're talking all about Florence Ravioli, which is a celebrity comedian here. Joey Cole, look, he, he can't even catch his bread, but I don't want him to. Keep eating. Don't worry about it. Because when I eat, you do the talking. Three. Yeah, you know what? You can't come in here and not eat. If, if my family was around right now, you would you would be eating more than you could, you could eat in one day. It's disgusting the way it used to be, but you know what? I miss it. Remember my mother used to say, you want something to eat? You say, no, nah, I'm not hungry. Why, you don't like my food? Yeah. That was a fight within seconds. So Lauren, thank you so much. Thank you, sons. We're down here, we're having some fun. Homemade ravioli pasta, Italian specialty dinners, gourmet deli sandwiches, catering. You want to go to Florence Ravioli, 391 Park Avenue, Scotch Plains, New Jersey, 908-322-7222. Or look them up on the internet, www florenceravioli.com like Florence, Italy Florence, Italy here's something else that we got salud, here today salud, salud, salud. 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 Hey. we're partying big time black cherry I like root beer they had birch beer remember birch beer yeah. cream soda I never really liked cream soda but birch beer root beer you put root beer on your vanilla ice cream who's better than you look at this guy scrappy I love Italian Christmas, five course, five fish dinners. Mike, when you coming to Toronto? I was just in Toronto, poor me. You guys got to subscribe to MikeMarino.net. Everybody do it right now. Subscribe, MikeMarino.net. I was just in Toronto with Goomba Johnny. I'm probably going to come back again really soon. Hopefully this time when I come back, I'll be with Joey Cola. Make America hey. Italian again. It's going to be a very, very funny show. Hey, Laurel. We are making raviolis as we speak. Honored hey. you guys are eating our food. <laughs> huh? Huh? Nice. Huh? There you go, baby. Today's show, live from my mother's basement, is sponsored in part by Florence Ravioli mm -hmm. of Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Let's do a commercial. Let's do a commercial. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Would you like to eat right now? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's, no, no, let's do take two. Ready? <clears throat> go. Are you hungry? I am. <laughs> Take three, if I'm cool. Take three. Wait, ready? Wait, I need, gotta get a product shot. Yeah, get a sandwich. Here, get the plate and put some vinegar on it. Put the vinegar no, let's on do it. Commercial All right, let's do the commercial first. All right, let's do the commercial first. Are you hungry? Are you starving? I am. Me too. So what do I do? We go to Florence Ravioli. You bet we do. Right there in Scotch Plains Park Avenue. The greatest in the world. Yes, you get cokes, you get sodas, you get sandwiches. And they're all tasty. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the phone number is? Hey, oh, yeah. Oh, what the fuck is the number? 908-322-7222. Lots of twos. Lots of twos. Hey, listen. When we were in Florence today, I saw this up on the wall. Now, let me know if you know what this is. All right. Look at the size of this piece of bread, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. When I was a kid, this was called pizza bread. Pizza bread. Mm -hmm. This was the pizza bread. I think it was called pizza bread because it's shaped like a yeah. pizza. But it is the warmest, softest, most tastiest mm -hmm. bread, right? The, the crust. You can hear the crust. Right? The Delicious. It's got yeah. a lot of moudig. And what we would do is you come home on a Sunday morning, you had your two loaves of bread, and you had the pizza bread, and you ripped off a nice big corner mm -hmm. like that, and you dipped it in your gravy. Mm -hmm. you scooped it up, you put it in your mouth, and who's better than you? Okay. And then in five minutes, you hear your mother going, who broke the bread? And she yelled and screamed. But she knew it was us, and she knew we were going to do it. So anyway, Florence Ravioli, you can get pizza bread. Look at that. It takes up the whole screen. Did you have oh, that? Good. Let me ask you a question. Did you call it gravy, or did you call it we sauce? We called it sauce, but some of my relatives called it gravy. It didn't even matter when you called it. You just put it on the table right away. I remember... When every, any of my relatives showed up at the house, everybody had to sit down and eat right away. They wasn't hanging out, having a drink. It was right to the empty past. You know what I mean? That's right. And it was everything. Super side, 10 different types. There was food everywhere. Then meatballs, then sausage, then macaroni. And then after that, there was a turkey or a roast or whatever. You know? After that, everything came back out. Then desserts, then nuts. And before everybody left, we ate again. Everything came back out. 
and then everybody got a, a, a thing to take home, you know? So my family moved to Long Island, so we were the first family to move to Long Island. So we were in the city. We were in Brooklyn every weekend. So we ate there. And my grandmother made her own homemade raviolis. She'd dry them out on the bed. Couldn't like, hey, kids, don't go in the bedroom. There's raviolis drying over there. So my raviolis, peas and pasta, all of it. And that's why I'm a Gavon now. That's yeah. why I just eat like crazy. I'm a, I'm a super duper Gavon because, listen, we're all here for a little while. Get your head straight, get your heart straight, get your soul straight. Enjoy the gifts that God gives us here. One of those greatest gifts is food, man. As long as you don't go too crazy. I mean, I'm a little bit overweight, but I really enjoy eating food. Don't you like, enjoy, like a, I'll, my, my, I go to, there's a place on Long Island called Uncle Giuseppe's. I get my mozzarella there. <laughs> I want to bring home a pound of mozzarella. It's shaped like a, like a, a softball that weighs a pound. But she says she wants one of them. I get two. I eat one like an apple on the way home. I'm just eating mozzarella like that. I know it's not, I don't do it all the time. Don't get crazy. Are you laughing? He just said I eat people, mozzarella like an apple. I do. I just, if that ain't like total that, Ginzo, I don't know what is. That's a Ginzo loom. Yeah. So, but you know what? You got to enjoy it. Like, I eat mozzarella like an time, apple. But also, does anybody even know the beauty of sitting down with a nice bowl of soup? You get a bowl of soup, a minestrone, you just sit there and enjoy it. Everybody's running around doing this, doing that, being crazy. Sit with a bowl of soup and shut your mouth and eat. Remember that? Remember that? Remember hearing that? Shut your mouth and eat. That's what we're doing. I don't know if anybody even has family where they sit down at night. At 6 o'clock in my house back in the day, if that phone rang and my father was having dinner with the three boys, my mother was going to kill somebody. Yeah. So what I do is I take out a little bit of the bread and right. I put extra mayonnaise and I put extra oil and vinegar on it. That's right. the way I like to have my sub sandwich. We are having turkey sandwiches on great Italian bread. Mm. I believe there's uh, Swiss cheese on here lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, and some onion for some bang. And it's also garnished with um, whatever this lettuce is. What's romaine? No, because, it ain't romaine. Why not? That, that's Boston leaf lettuce. Boston leaf lettuce. Because romaine lettuce is off the menu now. No one can eat it anymore because it's a disease. disease. This, is, this is not that. This is uh, Boston leaf lettuce. How do you know about diseased lettuce? on the news. You're not supposed to eat romaine lettuce anymore. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you get like a thing and it, something grows and they... Take it off and they ship it to the thing. You got to put it back and they cut off your thing. There's <laughs> <laughs> Billy Greco. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Nice to see you. Yes, that's pizza bread, Italian sausage sandwich. Look at all the Italians writing into the show right now. If anybody has any questions for uh, Joey Cola, right now would be a good time because he's between sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Right now would be good. Because he's going down for another one. In a second. And then we're going to have cannolis later. Wow, look at all this. There's Tony Novello, who's the father of everybody who was on the show last night. We had a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Tony. And thank the kids once again. Uncle, Uncle Giuseppe's from... Uh, That's great. That's great that you gave the kids a chance. You know what I yeah. mean? You Young kids. kids out. I mentor a lot of kids. They call me and they ask about being a stand-up comic or, you know, anything. Um, it's up to us now. What I, I feel is, is to help kids. You got to, if a kid will ask you a question, take the time to answer the question fully. If anybody asks you about your career or whatever, um, you know, I give, people ask me about stand-up comedy and whatnot. And what I do is I, I give them my phone number. And if I got some time on a Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, I'll sit and I'll talk with somebody. And that one talk might help somebody with their whole career. You never know. Sometimes you do it, you, you just let it go. You never know what's going to happen. What happened to me was Jimmy Fallon, years ago, um, I was working a club up in Albany called the Comedy Works, and it was I was headlining, and there was two other comics ahead of me, and the kid comes in, it's Jimmy Fallon, I didn't know it, he's 17 years old, he's there with his dad, and he goes, hey, Mr. Cole, you mind if I do a set? And I said, I have no problem, but the other two comics, like, I don't want that kid to go on, and whoever was managing the club, it was Tom Nicky's club, but someone was managing, he said, I don't think I have time for this kid to go on. So I said, you know what, I want him to go on. They said, no, I can't do it tonight, Saturday night, can't do it. So I was, in, I was doing a 45-minute set. So halfway through my 45 minute set, I said to the audience, you know what? I got to go to the bathroom right now, but I got a kid here who's going to entertain you for five minutes. Give it up for Jimmy Fallon. I didn't know his name. I forgot about him. I bring him up. He plays guitar. He had a little troll doll and he did, he did it for five minutes. I don't know how he did it. Probably didn't do that well. He was seven years, 17 years old. But anyway, 
He gets off. I come back on stage. That was that night. A year later, same thing happens at the Bananas in Poughkeepsie. And I brought him up. And this time the owner said, can you bring him up? And I said, yeah. If I bring him up, he does five minutes, he does well. Anyway, cut to 17, 18 years later. I'm warming up the Rosie O'Donnell show at, at uh, uh, Studio 8G on uh, the eighth floor at 30 Rock, right where they shoot um, Saturday Night Live. And he's on Saturday Night Live. So I'm walking down the hallway, and I get a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. It's Jimmy Fallon. So I go, hey, Jimmy, how you doing? He goes, you don't remember me, do you? And I go, you're Jimmy Fallon for Saturday Night Live. He goes, no, no, no. I'm going to tell you what you did for me. And I told and he told me the story about me putting him on stage because I did it for a bunch of kids back then, you know. I helped try to help him out. He told me that story. He says, someday I'm going to have my own show, and I'm going to put you on it. I said, oh, don't, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'll take care of myself. God takes care of me. I'm good. So anyway, he got he finished Saturday Night Live, and he got his own show, Jimmy, the late night with Jimmy Fallon. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he he actually called me. It was 2010, April Fool's Day, April 1st, 2010. A month before that, he called me. He said, I finally got my own show, and you're going to be on it. And he put me on a show, and I did stand up on a show. And it was mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. So you never know who you're helping out. That's why you just do it. You help everybody out. Not that you want anything in return. Because that's not what you do. You don't you don't do something to expect something in return. You do things you do things for people out of the goodness of your own heart and please God. Remember remember what remember what, remember what Christ I would not want to get religious here or anything because some people get turned off by that. What Christ said, whoever ho- helps the least of my brethren, you're helping me. So if you it doesn't matter whoever you help, you're helping God. He sees that and he helps you. And I've lived my whole life by that. My whole life I've lived by that. And that's the way it works. So luckily enough, I've been doing stand-up comedy for 38 years. I mean, I've had some health issues here and there. I had Bell's palsy back in May, and my whole face fell down. But uh, I went for acupuncture, and, you know, my face came back. Everybody runs into different problems. The thing is, to get back up, jump over the hurdle, and keep on going. I'm going to have another sandwich. <laughs> that's an unbelievable story, how he got on the Jimmy Fallon show. Isn't that fantastic? Amazing. We used to call Jimmy Fallon right now and say, Jimmy, <laughs> I want you to go on live from my mother's basement. You'll eat good. He's a big star now on the on on Tonight Show. But, you know, I, as we were saying before, I'm doing it 38 years. I came up through the ranks in Long Island comedy and Brooklyn comedy and, you know, pimps and all these co- clubs that used to be all around. I worked with, like, everybody from David Brenner to Leno. And I did a show of Governors in Levittown one time where uh, I was MC and Rosie O'Donnell was the middle act and Jay Leno was the closer. You know, there was a comedian, you want to learn about stand-up comedy, Richard Jenny took me under his wing for many years. Uh, a guy named uh, Richie Minavini who had an East Side Comedy Club on Long Island. I worked that club a lot. Don Marrera was another guy who was an influence on me. And, and also Richard Pryor and Carlin. And one of my greatest stories, Mike, is that I was uh, I, I, back in the '80s and early '90s. I was doing a lot of stand-up on television, like on A and E and uh, Caroline's Comedy Hour, and even at the Improv. I did four of those. So George Carlin saw me somewhere, and he called my manager, Jeff Sussman, who now manages Kevin James and Joe Rogan. He was my manager at the time, and he called him. He said, "When he said to Jeff was, hey, listen, I just saw Joey on television. Can you give him my number? I want you to want him to call me.'" I was like, get out of here. So he saved the message and played it for me. I wound up calling George Carlin, and George Carlin and I actually became friends to the point where he came to see me at the Riviera Comedy Club in Vegas and invited me over to Bally's. He was doing the, uh, where they had the, the Jubilee uh, show there. He was uh, doing that theater, and I got a chance to go over there and see him. So actually, we, we became friends on the phone. He sent me all of his HBO comedy specials. And uh, we, we get on the phone. He actually, I was honored because he asked me to, he didn't, I mean, not, I don't want to say the word critique, but he said, what do you think of that? What do you think of this? And, and we were on the phone. Not, I, I, I don't ever want to take the credit, any kind of credit for actually writing with George Collin. But we would talk and, and some ideas would pop up. And, and uh, I had this, I used to do an impression of uh, Joe Pesci. Hey, man, what are you doing over there? Hey, I'm Joe Pesci. Hey, like that. And he liked that. So we had a conversation of, um, about God and Christ. And everything. he said, I pray to Joe Pesci. That's why I pray. And we both told him. And he actually used it in his, he, of course, he embellished it. But he used that idea in one of his HBO specials. Now, to have a conversation with George Carlin and have that happen is a pretty amazing thing, you know. So, but um, 
I know who, I took who in the stand up world would be like your influence. I know everybody yeah. asks a comedian that was those <laughs> questions. I always get asked who's your influence? Yeah, like I just said, Bob Marrera, Richard Richard Jenny, Richard Minamini, uh, and you know, Bob Nelson, Rob Bartlett is a great comic. Um, you know, guys that are working now, Gary Delina is another guy who's out in the middle of the he does the cruise ships and they're pounding it out. John Joseph, um, years ago, uh, you know, Daryl Hammond, who's on Saturday Night Live, was a, is a great stand-up comic. He just doesn't do it that much anymore. But I've worked with so many, so many different comics. And I, I was so lucky um, in, this, uh, in this life to be around such funny people like yourself. I mean, you're one of my idols. When I watch you on stage, you're impeccable. You're flawless. You're bulletproof. You're Templar. You, you become like a Superman. And your, your confidence on stage is like nobody I've ever seen. Um, I just got to see my friend Judy Gold not long ago, and she's another one who's fearless on stage. Um, about Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell was, a, was not only a great influence to me, and I got to work with her a lot, but she didn't drive, and I drove her around. We got to work together, and, and then I became a headline headliner. But when I warmed up her TV show, people – um, a lot of people have a lot of political opinions about Rosie, what she did, what she didn't do, whatever. All I can tell you about Rosie is that she's the most generous person I've ever met in my life. And I'll tell you one story. We came into 30 Rock one time. We were doing the Rosie O'Donnell show. And I got in there early, like 7 o'clock in the morning. And I see her in the hallway. And she looked like uh, she looked like she hadn't slept all night, you know. I said, hey, Rosie, big shot. I know her from the stand-up clubs and everything. I said, hey, big shot, what are you doing, hanging out with your Broadway friends at Joe Allen's all night? And she said, no, I couldn't sleep last night, so I went to Sloan Kettering and wrote checks. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And she would write checks, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. She would go in in the middle of the night to the waiting rooms at Sloan Kettering where these families were distraught because their loved ones are pinned down by cancer. When right. Rosie O'Donnell would go in there and write, she never, nobody knows this. She never told anybody, but I've never met. I mean, I knew from working on the show what she did through the people that worked for her, what she would do. But, and I see, I've seen her raise unbelievable amounts of money for every, for every charity, especially helping kids. And that's why it's an honor for me to be working with Rachel Ray now also, because Rachel Ray uh, if you buy, if she really loves animals a lot. I mean, she loves humans too. She's a no, no kid hungry. She's a very big supporter of that. But if you have pets too, she doesn't like um, the animals to be in the shelter. So she has, sells nutrition, cat food and dog food. Right. And, uh, up to this date, 20, over just over $29 million she's raised to help uh, dogs and cats and shelter animals and, and to save their lives and help ones that are hurt and stuff. So um, that's what it's all about to me. When I, when I do my stand-up comedy, luckily I get paid for doing it, but I, I'm involved in 34 different charities. The Guardian Brain Foundation, Comedy Cures with Sarah Northberg, uh, Juvenile Diabetes, Autism Speaks. I can go on and on. Go to my website if you want to find out more about that. But I do tons of charity work, and you know what? When it, what goes around comes around, it comes back to you, Mike. You know that. Well, we all, as entertainers, lend ourselves to charities and uh, there you go you just found out that uh, rosie o'donnell one of the biggest names in the stand-up world went to sloan kettering and made donations no those Many are things times. that you don't hear in the news but you actually just found out about it right here live from my mother's basement because that's a true story and he's using hellman's mayonnaise yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do a commercial for hellman's that's okay we can do whatever we want we're going through these sandwiches pretty quickly we're having a lot of fun now, Joey, in a couple of hours, has to go down to a comedy club that's pretty well known in Point yeah. Pleasant, New Jersey. Yeah, Uncle and maybe, Vinny's. Maybe throughout the state of New Jersey. It's called Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. It's on Arnold Avenue mm -hmm. in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Yeah. You'll see new comedians. You'll see soap stars. And you actually see some big name comedians going down mm -hmm. there at mm -hmm. different parts of the year. Tonight, you will actually see Joey Cola. And he'll also be performing there again Tomorrow night, yeah. Is it two shows, yeah. one tonight, one tomorrow? One tonight, one tomorrow. And the thing is about that club, you know, Mike, we make our living as comedians. Sometimes we do big theaters. Sometimes we rock it out big time. I've made my living for 38 years. Low ceilings, one to 200 people, it gets intimate. Because we need to have that certain intimacy when you're talking to an audience, you know? So uh, Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant is perfect for that. And I've been going there since it's been open. 
and uh, one of my one of the best places to work. I have so much fun when I'm working there. The audiences have fun, and I don't make fun of everybody. Like people are like, oh, I don't want to sit in front of the comedy show. I make fun of myself first. I'm the most vulnerable one. So don't be like, oh, I don't want to be made fun of. Listen, we're all only here for a half hour. Get in there. Let's have fun together. Put some vinegar on your sandwich. You know what's funny? <laughs> Not only is it a great place to see good entertainment, but they got great food, and it's a bring your own. And the guy who works mm -hmm. there, who owns the place, you know, I belly and his brother, Jerry. Jerry, mm -hmm. I don't know how he forgot his name right off the top. Great guys. They put on a good show. They bring great talent down there, and it's a lot of fun. So if you have something to you have nothing to do tonight, you got nothing to do tomorrow night. You happen to be on the Jersey Shore area. Mm -hmm. I recommend that you go see Mr. Joey Cola. Tell him Mike Marino sent you. Say hello to Dino, and tell him from now on to use Hellman's mayonnaise. And buy their food from Farm Trevio. There you go. One show, nine thirty each night. One show, nine thirty tonight. One show for tomorrow night. Dude, I think you got a fan over here. Is this Corrado Canarella? You know him? Who? Oh, I, I can't see him. Corrado Canarella. Hey, Corrado, how you doing? Leisha, how are you? Sounds familiar. Becky, how are you? Bill, it's nice to see you. Thank you everybody for writing in on Instagram right now. I know we're getting tons of letters, but Joey and I are I having so sure much fun. I want to go through onto your toilet here. Yeah, he doesn't want to ruin my antiques. You got an antique doily here. I don't want the vinegar to seep through. He's got more vinegar uh, than I've ever seen anybody oh put on a God, slice of bread. Really Actually, good, Joey's loving the sandwiches from Florence Ravioli. I remember when I was young, and I would still even do it now. You take a little olive oil. You take uh, the um, mm -hmm. this oil. This uh, why do I always forget to say this? What the fuck is this? Balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar, and then you rip this apart. Put a little salt and pepper mm -hmm. in your puddle that you make mm -hmm. with the oil and vinegar, and you take this and you dip it in there. That's and that's that's a meal. This. That's yeah. a meal. He's doing it with his turkey sandwich. The size of this piece of bread. And you know what you do with a piece of bread like this when you're my age? You don't eat it because your cholesterol will go right through the fucking roof. Oh, I keep cursing on my shirt. Huh. I don't I'm passionate about what I say. No, not the bread, it's the carbs. <laughs> People don't eat carbs anymore. Yeah. I don't eat carbs. Don't eat carbs. Eat this, eat that. Eat everything. I have eggs in the morning. You know what I mean? Eggs are good. I've been eating a lot of yogurt. It's good for your system. It gets everything moving. You, you hear that? Yeah. Something just happened. <laughs> I heard his stomach. <laughs> He's talking about yogurt. His stomach just said, no, I don't want any. Oh, my God. Thank you so Alicia much. Alicia McGuire, it's nice to see you. Kimberly, it's nice to see you. Nikki, what's going on, brother? Hi, Becky, Nikki Barker. How are you? Nicker, 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 Nicker and that's Marker. something. Subs look good. Getting hungry. Well, I tell you, if you're in the area, I don't know how far away they go to deliver, but we're enjoying these sodas mm -hmm. and we're enjoying these sub sandwiches. Of course, it's not the only thing that they have at Florence Ravioli, Scotch Plains, New Jersey, on Park Avenue. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that there's so many people complaining about what people say these days. Uh, the latest thing now in the news is. Uh, the the song "Baby It's Cold Outside." Somebody's offended by that. that. Yeah. Really the the song "Baby It's Cold Outside" right. is offending someone because they say the lyrics are offensive to women. <clears throat> well, I mean, I really don't know what to say anymore. I think I'm just always going to say uh, nothing. Wait, which particular lyric is offensive? Um, baby, it's cold outside. It's baby, she's yeah, getting yeah, kind of yeah, late. Like yeah. the guy keeps trying to get to go out with her. Yeah, but that's the goal, isn't it? Well, yeah, but How somebody, somebody, got, people, somebody, got, together somebody got offended by that. I was I in the airport a couple of days ago, as I'm there, at, let's say, once a week. You travel a lot. I'm always on a plane. And uh, an older lady was standing with some bags. So I said, Miss, would you like my chair? And I got up. And she said, no, thank you. I says, no, I insist. Go ahead and take my chair. Mm -hmm. And some young girl next to her said, I'm offended by that. What are you saying, that we can't hold our own? So I said, okay, wow. and fuck it, and I took the chair. <laughs> mm. But I mean, come on. <laughs> Chivalry is not dead, well, you just mm -hmm. killed it. Yeah. Well, it wasn't for the girl, it was for the lady, right? Mm -hmm. Why is she got to open her mouth? I don't know. I really don't know. You, you know, you were doing her a favor. Mind She's your own business. She's an older lady, right? Yeah. yeah so maybe Senior she citizen, I wasn't going to sit there. Mm. But anyhow, that's the thing about people. You got to be good from the heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Mm -hmm. Have God first, and you're done. 
We just, it's very simple. We knock greed out of the, out of the equation. We knock some testosterone out of the equation. Everything will go fine. Things are smooth. We can't make our own problems. Sooner or later, because of oxidation, our body's gonna break down anyway. That's the battle you wanna fight. And you're gonna need help for that. You start other stuff with other people, no matter what color you are, what your sexual orientation is, how old you are, male, female, everybody's just gotta get along. That's it. Everybody you, hates me, that's what it is. You know how people got along okay. when, when my family was around? What happened? We come home from school and say, Ma, I didn't make the baseball team. She said, that's okay, I'll make you something to eat. Mm -hmm. Ma, I asked the girl to go with me to the prom. She said, no, that's okay, I'll make you something mm -hmm. to eat. Mm -hmm. Ma, I hurt my foot. That's all right, I'm gonna make you something to eat. I yeah. didn't get the job, that's okay, I'm gonna make you something mm -hmm. to eat. So what's the answer? Have something Jeez. to eat. <laughs> Even this is, this is Johnny Masella. Mike, does the country need an Italian president? All right, so he wants to get my goat going. All right, All let's, right. Let's, let's, let's do this. Because we're going to finish up these sandwiches, then we're going to get some cannolis. Oh, my God. <clears throat> and Joey got a show to do. Here's Corrado again. We need to make America Italian again. Okay, so here we go, Joe. I came up with many different catchphrases and slogans in my life. Thank you very much. The number one one that I did was, of course, get the bat, and that's why there's baseball bats all around my house. And antique ones, too. Antique nice ones, ones, nice ones from back in the 1800s yeah. when baseball first started. People made new ones. It's unbelievable how lucky I am that I get these special gifts. But when I was 16 years old and I first got my driver's license, my parents did not buy my car. I bought my car. I worked at the shop right. I made enough money to buy a $600 1967 piece of shit Mustang, mm -hmm. and I couldn't wait to drive it. My father said, okay, good luck with the car. Here's a baseball bat. Keep it in the front seat in case anybody gets out of line. You straighten them out. Well, of course, you can't do that shit these days because you get arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. That's how I came up with that catchphrase okay. because I thought that was okay. Now we're doing this one because I'm saying, let's make America Italian again. Now, of course, I kid around, but mm -hmm. what if I was the president of the United States? and you were like the vice president. Now you got two Italian guys from the East Coast running the country. And we have sit downs like this and we talk things out. We have a problem in a foreign country. We wanna to talk to somebody like Putin, or we wanna to talk to somebody like the guy in North Korea. No problem, we invite him down the basement. <laughs> we sit him down here, we do it live on Facebook. We tell everybody our little conversation. We say, hey, this, that, and the other thing, right? Mm -hmm. And if things don't work out the way we want them to work out, well, then they never leave the basement. That's not our problem. We got crawl spaces down here. There's dirt in there. There's a hole in there. Who's going to know anything? And then what do we do? We have something to eat. Like mommy said, don't worry about it. Have something to eat. And then to see how nice the country is. And then when somebody comes out of the woodwork and says, oh, I'm offended by a few things. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We say, okay, no problem. Come down to the basement. And we're going to have some food. We're going to talk. And if the conversation don't go right, we can't solve a problem. Well, they don't leave the basement. We got plenty of space in the crawl space. Hey, bro, I'm going to have some thoughts about being in this basement right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't say the right thing, he ain't going to make it to his show tonight. That's right. <laughs> but, my last meal. Sure, we kid around, but I really do think that if I was in power, because I'm thinking of running in 2020, I might run for president in 2020, at least one thing would be right. I wouldn't tweet. I don't want anybody to know what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'll relocate the White House from Washington to New Jersey. We have the meetings here in the basement. My mother will do all the cooking. We're always going to eat good. And we're going to get a lot of laughs. Right now, you're getting fan mail from Marco Asante. Always wanted to work with Joey Cola. Isn't that cool? That's, great. That's Marco Asante, who I owe a phone call to today. Great, great, great comedian. A great guy. Hello, Marco. Marco. Hola. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sure he got that joke. Yeah. Well, listen, folks, we got to get going. Joey's got a big show tonight. We're going to plug a lot of different stuff oh, before yeah. we get off the yeah. air, but this has been one of my favorite shows so far. I'm having a lot of fun doing Mike Marino. That's me, live from my mother's basement. I've had some really, really great guests. There's a big celebrity comedian sitting right here. Thank one you, more Joey. time, this is Joey Cola. Oh, what is your website? JoeyCola.com and Rent the Movie Gender Bender. Rent the Movie Gender Bender. Amazon, Google Play, and iTunes. Right. 
And if they rerun some episodes of Kevin Wait, what was it? Yeah, Kevin can wait. He was That's the guy who's going to be on no more. It was a funny show. But, it was really funny when you yeah, were eating the corn. I was eating the corn. I was the corn guy. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can get it on YouTube and watch it. Yeah. Right. Uh, and Joey, of course, is going down to Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. Very funny comedy club. Great entertainers down in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. And good food. Have some fun. Great food. Nice Italian fellas yeah. down there. Big meatballs. You make these meatballs, raviolis, the whole nine yards. And uh, you can always find me at MikeMarino.net. Make sure you subscribe. Now, I end my show by saying the same thing all the time. I don't know if you know this, but we're going to have you say it, too. And thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, at Florence Ravioli, right here on thank Park Avenue. Thank you, Florence Ravioli. Place. We love you the, guys. The food was absolutely fantastic. Yes. They're having a special right now. So for the holidays, if you want to buy one of those six-foot giant subs, you want to pick special on it, you can buy their own drinks. And it's a lot of fun. Very, very delicious. Get yourself some pizza bread. And we'll see it. But I end every one of uh, end all my episodes by saying the same thing. First of all, let's make America Italian again. You don't know none. You didn't see none. You don't say nothing. And I always end my broadcast by always saying the same thing. Don't take no shit from nobody. Say it. Don't take no shit from nobody. Ever. <laughs> Any shit from anybody. Don't take any shit from anybody. Don't take no shit from anybody. He's Don't take any shit from anybody. Don't take no shit. What he said. Bye. <laughs> hey, folks, I hope you're enjoying watching my podcast live from my mother's basement. We're having a lot of fun, and I'm going to have a lot of great guests on the show in the future. So if you like it, hit like. You could also leave a comment. You could subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch other funny videos. And you could also listen to my podcast on your favorite podcast app like Spotify and iTunes.